Bitch, you gonna open us up in prayer? Yes, we will. Uh, you ready? Hey. Yes, sir. Oh, most holy and eternal Father, we thank you once again, God, for allowing us to come together uh, just to learn of you, Lord Jesus, for we know that it's you that we need. We see all of uh, our circumstances and uh, the problem that's going on. Lord Jesus, we know that there's none else that can help us but you. And we need to know you. We need to know you, Lord Jesus, from the crown of our head to the soul of our feet. We need to know about you, Lord Jesus. We need to, we need to have that intimate relationship with you, oh God, that you might direct us in the way that we should go. And we pray that that's what we will learn tonight. In your precious name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> um, corrupt communication is kind of a part two segue. I don't know, pastor say three, four, five. Y'all, he might be on four. I don't know. Um, corrupt communication is the power of gossip. Mm -hmm. From my understanding, you must have talked to Tanya Hey. Tasha, girl, let me tell you. And that was all I would have never get. Now, mind you. Yes. And what's so crazy about it? Now look, you hear this from me. Mm-hmm. Don't you see going for talk? Girl, now listen at this. Girl, you think I'm lying. Ooh, so bad. Look, I'm gonna tell you this. Now we do talk. <laughs> This is coming from Ephesians 4, 25 <coughs> through 27. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give the place, neither give place to the devil. Right? It's continuing Ephesians 28 through 29. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the heaven, to the hearer. I'm sorry. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Yah, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Yah for Christ's sake have forgiven you. That's Ephesians four, thirty through thirty two. But words will never hurt me. Ever wonder why you can seem to be doing things right and all of a sudden it's like Yah has cut off communication or stop talking to you. For one, that's because you put in the spirit. He's telling you to do something and you ain't doing it. If you're not doing and walking in the spirit, you can stop from, from communicating with you. The Bible tells us clearly where to look if you are experiencing silence from our Father. Your words are way more powerful than you can ever understand. Solomon said that the very power of life and death is in the, in the tongue. When we have candid conversations about people, we grieve the Holy Spirit, which shuts off communication with the Father. We must learn that even the smallest conversations can cause a big fuss in the Spirit. First John 4 and 20 says, If a man says he loves God and hates his brother whom he sees every day, he is a liar. Now I know you're thinking, how can, you, how can a little gossip equate hate? Well, the scripture we just read, Ephesians 4.32, says that corrupt communication equals hate, bitterness, evil, etc. The ability to talk about someone indicates that there is some type of animosity. We must learn to destroy this in our lives so that we don't 
grieve the Holy Spirit and keep our mind to Yah open at all times. So you watch me? Oh, okay. Get your ears. Gossip is a drug that spreads quickly. The excitement of conversation over what two, two black women over here. <laughs> the excitement of conversation overwhelms the harsh reality of the topic, which is everyone you are supposed to be showing love. Matthew eighteen and fifteen says, "If you have fought with someone, go to them alone. Whenever someone else is involved, things get messy." Remember, there is no such thing as just a random or innocent conversation. Your words have power and should be treated that way. Let's learn to use our words in conversations to lift each other up and never to tear each other down. Why was that important, y'all? Anybody know? Anybody know that why that's important? I think it's important because we have to really learn how to watch our words. And we use them so carelessly. And the things we just do on a day to day basis, we just don't get so common with it. And you know, and it's like normal. So basically make breaking what's normal. Kinda of like you said last night, divorce it, the old and take it on a new mindset. That's it. In the beginning, I, I uh, want you to read the scripture. It also talked about uh, us uh, showing purpose uh, to others. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's a very important thing. Uh, I think we kind of jumps over that a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And we lose the fact that we put we put more, more ourselves into it not understanding uh, that we are supposed to uh, be more about the other man than ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something we don't, you know, you know we don't, that's something we don't trick you, you know. You know, we, 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 we believe in the picket fence. So, you know, we, we, we believe in fencing our stuff in, you know, and taking care of uh, I tend to my business. Yep. You know. yep. That's not what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Everything he was just saying, do you know God don't reside there? Well, we learn, we learn he don't reside there. When you build up them walls and fences, I can just worry about me. Okay. Man, he just don't seem like he ain't answering me. He ain't. He ain't. You've grieved the Holy Spirit. You've grieved, you've shut off communication with him. It is so important that we treat each other here with. It's so important that he set a mandate for you. If he wanted us to be alone, he wouldn't have created y'all. When he created y'all, he, he gave a command. He said, it is not good that man should be alone. Mm -hmm. well, he wasn't about and he wasn't just talking life. about no man. Right. If you look up that word man in that state, remember I told y'all, you got to start looking at words are important. We're, we're going to talk about words a lot. I think it comes from the lack of hearing these types of scriptures growing up. Mm -hmm. If we was fed these types of scriptures more than not trying to be funny, or, you know, but instead of he got up right. and stuff like that every other Easter and Christmas and the same repetitive sermons. It seems like we hear the same repetitive sermons more than it's a whole bunch of other scriptures we don't really hear or we don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's called indoctrination. Yeah. We were indoctrinated with scripture instead of uh, actually being fed and taught. Actually being yeah. fed and taught. You're right. Exactly. Fed and taught. Both fed and taught. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to feed something to somebody, but it's another thing to teach them what that means. Right. If you keep, keep feeding your kids greens, all they know is mama want me to eat greens. But if you tell them this is what's going to help you grow faster and this will help the doodle slide, then they'll understand. 
They understand they got why they ain't got a stove in the bathroom. Y'all give them all work retarded. No, I but understand. It's the, oh, no, I'm not yeah. trying to cut you off. I wasn't finished, but I'm definitely. Oh, I'm sorry. But no, I understand the more why it's important to read the Bible for yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, like before you just go to church and go, you know, you just go in here and what the pastor say and that's it. But when you start digging to it and reading it for yourself, you'd be a lot more understanding. And what stuff you got to relearn mm -hmm. and, you know, stuff like that. That's real good. I was getting a download. I was <laughs> I was on the road and I was getting a download. And immediately when he gave me a download, there's a scripture that part pops in my heart. And I got to go find it. Like, I got to go. I immediately got to go find it. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, why is that all? I say, if you say something to me, why do I always go look for you? Say, because that's how I made you. Mm -hmm. yeah, for so many, for so, for so long, like, you can, you can hear somebody say something and be like, ooh, that's it. Right? But it has no verification to it. I never tell y'all nothing up here without scripture. I, if, I never just tell you what I think. Because if I'm telling you what I think, I'm telling you wrong anyway. Because my thoughts is not his thoughts. It should be backed up by something. For years we have sat in the pulpits hearing somebody say, and then this said, and but I mean, that's cool. If that's how you teach, that's how you teach. But I promise you, I have sat there and I've listened. I ain't going to say where we was at. We were sitting in the car one time and I heard this dude singing a bunch of lies. And everybody, whoo! Oh, they were going crazy. Everything he wants for went, went backed up by no scripture. But they went home thinking that that man preached. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know for a fact that went in scripture because I looked up every single thing that he said because I heard it growing up. None of it. Well, I, not one thing. From the time he started humming to the time he finished, it wasn't a single scripture in there. This was early on too. But he only showed me that this ain't to Rebuke nobody or none of that. I'm only saying that because how easily we can get off track. How easy, how, because it's been done to us for so long. But anyway, let's get into it. The reason why that was important, what she said was the mindset that we can do this alone or the mindset that it's about us or the mindset of selfishness in general has got to die. It got to die. I claimed up and down just a few minutes ago. I was so tired. You hear me? Boy, you can't sit, man. I'm talking about, get up. I just want to sleep for They said, bro, what you doing? You ain't tired. You putting on. No, no, I'm tired. No, you're putting on. You don't know what tired is. And if he tell me I don't know what tired is, you're right, I don't, because I don't want you to show. That's there's a dip. I'm trying to tell you, there's a difference. You try you good. Go ahead and eat your food. You try to figure out, you try to figure out things on your own. But what happens is it makes you go your own way. And every time, remember what we talked about last night, every time your mind goes to selfish, you are stepping outside of his will. Every time, I don't care what it is. Every, now I'm, I'm just going to think about me. What you getting ready to do? <laughs> I heard something today say self right self righteousness is a new religion. Ah. Oof, that's good because it is. Because it is. That ain't what I think. That ain't what I believe. I, who cares what you think or what you believe? There, people. There are plenty of people that's gonna go with their beliefs to hell. Many people are gonna go with their thoughts to the fire. A bunch of them. Because you don't think it's right, don't make it not right. Your thoughts is what gets you in trouble anyway. 
Let's get into it. Prepare for. Let's get back to eating. I don't know how many prepares there is, y'all. I just look. I'm not gonna be. In, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the rest of them might be prepares. I don't know. But we at four. Prepare for. Let's get back to eating. And that song been in my head. There was, it means something to me now, though. For this, especially the first stanza, let's get back to eat and live on top of the world. That means something to me now. It didn't used to mean that to me. It means something to me now. Now I understand it. Whoever wrote that song knew something about something. Anyway, Matthew 5 and 43 through 44 say, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. I try to get fancy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which uh, despitefully use you and persecute you. Now this scripture, you got to swallow it. Like a, you got to swallow it like a knife. Bro. This ain't this. No, you ain't, this, you ain't, this ain't like swallowing mayonnaise. Just, <laughs> mayonnaise go down easy. Mm -mm, that last year. This right here don't go down easy. Right. Man, they ain't slick. Mm -hmm. This right here like a, a two-edged sword right here. This is mm -hmm. this like a, a, a Popeye's biscuit. <laughs> dry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't dry like a Popeye's biscuit. This is what I don't want to do. In my selfishness. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to love my neighbor. I don't even want to tell him, hey, I'm just me. I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about y'all. I know y'all sanctified. <clears throat> I don't want to love my enemy. Don't, I don't want to do that. I don't... <laughs> I don't want to do good for people who curse me. And I darn sure don't want to pray for none of them. But I want y'all to listen to something though. It says love your enemies. So that lets me know that I have the choice whether or not to do this. Your old mindset tells you that love is butterflies. It is mushy feeling. And this no. This mindset helps me understand that this thing right here called love is a choice because I have to choose whether or not to do this to somebody I don't like. So all of this is a choice. You got to wake up every morning and choose to think this way. You ain't falling into heaven. You got to choose it. Y'all ain't listening to me. You have to choose it. You're going to have to do something. It's not going to just fall upon you. It might initially fall on you, but after it fall on you, you still got to do something. Forty-five through forty-six says that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, the place that we're supposed to already be. Not trying to get to. Well, I'm changing. We're gonna change that mindset today too. Stop trying to get there and walk in. Christ said the kingdom is at hand, which means it's already here. So if you're not there, you choose not to be. Tells us to walk in heavenly places. For he make his son to rise. His son, it's his. Not ours. That ain't our son. I don't care how many they try to create. It's still his. Yeah, they can black say how many ever one they want to. He said one. His son. He ain't say sons with an S. So they can keep on whatever they want to keep on keeping on. He maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? 
Do not even the publicans the same. I told y'all that should say sinners. But listen, this is the order of being his children. This mindset is the way his children think. Go ahead. That's why is that not why he's like if you have on a different mindset, he said you are of your father the devil. The devil of Satan. It's only yeah, it's only yeah. Children. You are of your father the serpent. That's yeah, only Satan. Only two sides. That's only two. Ain't no middle ground. Ain't no. We gotta get rid of this thought of good people. You either his or the enemies. There's only two sides. Forty-seven through forty-eight says, "And if ye salute your brethren only, we got a problem doing that. We won't even salute our brothers. Y'all, we ain't even got to the part of where we can salute our brothers and sisters and cousins and mamas and daddies and kinfolk. We ain't even got here yet. But we say we're the children of the Most High. How?" This is the definition of his children. He said until we get until we get here, we can't even call ourselves his children. What do you what do you more than others? Do not even the publican so sinners. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. So wait a minute. This is the definition of perfect. So merely me learning how to love everybody is walking in perfection. God. Because we know he's we know he's perfect. But he trying to tell you why he's perfect. And because he could have told everything up. But he said he allows his son to shine on everybody. He allows the rain to rain on the just and the unjust. Y'all ain't listening to what I'm telling you. He ain't treating Billy Bob this way and Sasha this way. He, he could. Man, he could have left me out there. I had, listen, he had every. I don't know what y'all did. He had every right to leave me where I was at. I don't know if I got full backs, but I turned every last one of them on. You understand what I'm telling you? He didn't. He didn't have a reason to save me. He didn't have a reason to allow me to get another breath to get it right. Do y'all know that every day we spitting in his face? He don't have a reason. We and this is the crazy part. We know what he did. We know what he sent his son to do. And we mad at the checkout lady for getting our order wrong. All right. Chapter one perfection. Genesis 2 and 8 through 10 says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was part. And, and from, this, from then, in, thence it was parted and became into four heads. That's Genesis 2 and 8 through 10. So we see here that God is plant. He, he, he created something. And he put the man in it. That's what it say. He put him in there. He put him in a garden that sounds like he got everything. Don't sound like he got a need for nothing. The garden before the fall. Eden, which means Adam's home or perfection. That's what Eden means. 
I try to look up other words and see what it means, but Eden is actually the Hebrew word. Or it's actually, the word is actually Adam, but it's Eden. And now I got to feel special. It was the place of holy ground where God could dwell with them. God created a place where he could dwell with his creation. Because everywhere ain't holy ground. But everywhere he eats is holy ground. So he created a place where he could be with his creation. All right? As long as they were in that place, they had no worries. They could just speak to a thing and it would be. Listen to that power. We supposed to have that power today. Whatever he said was. I ain't talking about God. I'm talking about Adam. Yes. Whatever he called the thing. That's what it was. That was his work. When he told him to till the ground, all he had to do to till the ground was say ground till. <laughs> what if you could say baloney sandwich? <laughs> That's how it was. Y'all th- all right. That's how it was. Is that the same no, 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 no. We ain't talking about manifestation. We ain't talking about any of that. But no, we ain't doing. We ain't, we, no, we ain't talking about that. Yeah, his work was not exhausted. Y'all, y'all got him. If he got, if he picked the strawberry, strawberry wasn't big enough. He said, "Bigger." <laughs> I want you to know. I and it sounds funny, but I want y'all to really grasp it, that what this place was, whatever he wanted. All he had to do was speak to it. And it was there. The world called it witchcraft. They can call it whatever they want to. I, don't, I ain't fooling with the world no more. I know. I know. I ain't talking against you. I know what you're talking about. They have a comeback against yeah, everything. That, that's that what they, say, that's what they do. Like that post at Genesis. Yeah, that's what they, but that's what they do. He say something, they come back and say, oh, that's like, oh, okay. We going to learn in this mindset. We ain't, cause you, you ain't got time to be worried about that. We ain't, we ain't doing that. Okay. He didn't have no marijuana either. No, we ain't worried about that. He didn't have yeah. yeah. no need for it. Yeah. Because there wasn't no weed. This was this place. <laughs> this place right here. They had the reefer out there. He was already hot. <laughs> y- y'all hear me? Mm-hmm. He walked around with that feeling that we be trying to catch. Every day. In fact, their thoughts were so pure, they had no concept that they were even naked. There was no such thing as naked. It didn't exist. I didn't curse until I got to college. I used to, when I first got to, when I first got to school, I used to carry a Bible around. My friend that, my friend that just died, they used to take, they used to call me preacher boy. I used to carry my Bible around. But the more that I hung around people that cursed, I started cursing. They would still tell me, you don't even sound right cursing. But it wasn't the point. The more that I spent time in their environment, I changed with the environment. Y'all understand what I'm telling you? It sounds like Adam was so pure in this environment. Adam and Eve was so pure in this environment. That they didn't even have another thought process. Mm-hmm. Do y'all understand what I'm telling you? Mm-hmm. Stay with me. All right, Genesis one through three uh, says, "Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He was smarter. He was slyer. He was quicker. He was more cunning. But there were other beasts. That's a whole nother teaching." And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Pause. Why is she even looking at it? Why, she, why, why did he mention this to her? Say that, look, that, that word out loud one more time. Because that's the word right there. What's that word? Nosy. Nosy. <laughs> Got to know everything. 
I just shared this with Sister Nisi on the way on the way here. We want to know. How many times do you hear this question? But how do I know if it's God? Why don't you know it's Him? Why is that even a question? That's good. That's good. Yes. The question shouldn't be, how do I know it's him? It should be, why don't I know if it's him? You just know. Faith is not the substance of things known. It's the substance of things hoped for. Because she wanted to know. Now, I want to tell y'all something. Adam already told her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> who, who made Adam? Who, ain't no, who made you in charge? <laughs> who did? Yeah. We? Huh? Listen to how this mindset starts to build. I'm yeah, trying to yeah, tell y'all something. Yeah, yeah. Those are selfish thoughts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to know for myself. Oh, Lord. Good. Right. <laughs> this is how it's this how it bubbles up. Man, Satan ain't giving you nothing you ain't looking at. Right. He can't tempt you with nothing you're not being tempted for already. Yeah. You gotta be looking at the thing. You gotta be wanting the thing for him to even offer it to you. Because what he was saying to her is, it look good, don't it? He just trying to nudge you in your desires. Jesus. Wow. And then the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. She know the whole infrastructure. She wasn't there. Somebody told her something. God said. Mm-hmm. So she knew where it came from. Right. I wonder if you know it. Did you say it right? You already know you ain't got no bit. We boy, we fool ourselves. I ain't sure. You sure? You know better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. You know you know better. You get in your little selfish ways and you yes. want what you want. You want what you want. You want what you want. And you tiptoeing yourself right out the garden. Every step you take. Then you got this whole little attitude. It's you, it's nasty too. It's just, just it's na- you know what I'm talking about. And can't nobody get it off you but you. I'ma be how I am till I'm done. If you look at yourself, you even start looking like a snake. Moving like one and everything. God said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, God didn't tell her not to touch it. Adam told her not to touch it. Because he he knew he had to make that thing extreme. If I tell her not to touch it, she at least know not even go close to it. Y'all know how y'all women get. Well, he said we ain't supposed to eat it. He ain't said we couldn't touch it. <laughs> but Adam understood the moment that you touch it. The, man, listen. Christ told somebody... Before they told you that you shouldn't touch another woman. But now I tell you, if you look upon her and think of her in the wrong way, you've done it already. Oh, he's making it harder. No, yet he's trying to tell you what sin does. Because it start right here. She had already come. She was already. They already ate it. Cause 
This is she wet and gonna eat. She wouldn't even have responded to that snake. If an ugly Negro come and try to holler at you, that nigga shut down before he say hey. Let him be cute. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Let him be tempting. Mm. Mm. You telling the truth. Yeah. Four through six says, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Here go her answer right here. Then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods. Oh, I can be with them. I can be just like them. Women's movement. Yeah, I can tell. I don't know what to do with it. Then I ain't got to. I, I can know. I can know what I need to know and I don't got to get it from nobody else. Mm -hmm. Knowing good. And evil. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Right. She already knew something though. Right. But she didn't know good and evil. Y'all ain't listening. You want to know too much. Still something pure and perfect. Ah. About humility. We send our kids off to school to get smarter and they come home dumber. Yes. Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They done adopted some stuff up there that you didn't send them up there with. <laughs> and when and when the woman saw. That the tree was good for food. See, he only introduced you to what you're looking at and make it enticing even more. Because she was already looking at the tree. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. Boy, boy, boy. Boy, she nice looking, ain't she, boy? It ain't going to hurt to look. How many times you heard that? Brother? Man, it don't hurt to look. You got married, you ain't die. Yeah, I did. When I said I do, I don't. Man, sometimes I walk my head down like this. <laughs> you think I'm from, man, I'm not. For, you didn't see me. No, I ain't see nobody. I showed it. I didn't see nobody. Man, I can walk in a room full of people and not see a soul. I've, I've trained myself that way. Because I know when I start looking, you can't stop. Especially not today, cause they 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 don't sell clothes no more. Just the word, they just the word. Yeah. The wrong naked. They wasn't garden naked. They was the other naked. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. You know that Negro wasn't telling her no. And that's the only one too? That's the only one he done made? He ain't made nobody. It's just me and her. Man, I've been, walk, I've been walking around here looking at these animals do their thing. I've been out here by myself. I got, listen. But not only did he know that, she knew that. Seven through eight says, and the eyes of them both were open. And they knew. God, now you know. You know something now. You want to know, now you know. They knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord, go, uh, Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid. They, whatever, whatever they knew. Made them hide. Remember the words. Whatever they knew. Made them hide. Uh, and they hid themselves. From the presence. Of the Lord God. 
amongst the trees of the garden. The departure after the fall. They put on a new mindset that allowed them to feel ashamed of who they were. And they covered themselves. They no longer saw things the way God originally intended them to see. They put on a new mind. They hid from the presence of God. They hid from the thing we search for every day. They were kicked out of the land that was created for them because of their new way of thinking. He said, I can't leave them here because they know too much and they're going to be not eat from all these trees. And ain't no telling what they're going to be after that. Sometimes the glory is so big, he got to hide you from it. He protecting you from you. So now you can't even be in the land that I created for you. We were supposed to be in Eden, and Eden was supposed to grow. Instead, we got kicked out, and we started growing the land we got kicked out into. Satan understood that in the presence of God, we are too strong. So in order to control us, he had to get us out of the garden, and he could only do that by giving us a new mind. He knew that in the presence of a God, we are too strong. Whenever or wherever there is a selfish thought, trouble is close behind. We are to put in the we are to put on the mind of Christ where there is no room for our own selfish intent. Remember, Satan knows. That in the presence of God, you are too strong. He can't do nothing with you. I want y'all to remember that. If you don't write nothing else down, write that down. Chapter 3, Eden, Kingdom Mindset. Philippians 2, 3 through 5 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. I know we read this earlier, but read it again. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Why does he say lowly of, lowly, lowly of mind, though? Why is he saying that? Why does he need you lowly of mind? Humbleness, right? When you lowly of mind, that means you're not thinking for yourself. This is why he said you must become as one of these little children. Why? Because you don't allow children to think for themselves. If I want you to, if I if I wanted you to think something, I'd tell you something. How what did that saying they used to say back in the day? Because a child only looks to their parents for direction. Heck, they can't even feed themselves. They are lowly at mind. They only know what they are taught. Period. If you th if they're not taught anything, they won't know. How many times you got you you've been saying, "I got to get tough on them. I got to make sure they're ready for the world." No, you need to make sure the world is ready for them. That'll change how you teach them. That's the y'all. Y'all wake up one day. But in lowliness of mind, let each uh, esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. I had it. I tell, I'm not going to say anything without giving you reference. All right. Christ came to restore what we lost in the garden. This is why he was called the second Adam. When we say kingdom. Do y'all know that the kingdom is a replica of Eden? Ah, I'm, I'm, it's a perfect place. That's why you can't go in there with your old body. You can't go in there with your old mind. We, we get, I get you. He came to introduce us to the kingdom where we can dwell with our father again. 
Y'all ever heard that God doesn't hear a sinner's prayer? Mm -hmm. This is what this stuff means. You can't contact him in your sinful nature with your sinful mind. You have to, we got, I got you. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. The kingdom is here, but it's here. This is how you live in this world, but not be of this world. That ye may prove. This is proof. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This all comes from just removing selfishness. Ain't that crazy? Removing it from your mind. Removing selfish intent, selfish thoughts. You can literally walk back into the kingdom or eat it in this teaching. Because it's the same thing. You literally can pass the cherubim with the fiery. That's Romans 12 and 2. Satan is trying to keep us from our power source, which is in the presence of Yah. That's our power source. It's in his presence. This is why the enemy tries. I got you, baby. This is why the enemy tries to trap us in sin. He knows that we hide our face from Yah out of shame. This is when we should actually be running to him. Well, go ahead, baby. I'm sorry. Now, going back to that last little tablet thing you said, um, you try to keep us out of the presence, but that, I say it all the time. That's why the world has us with so many distractions and tell us to, you know, chase this and chase that and mm -hmm. all we chasing that. We're not focused on y'all or spending time on y'all. We're busy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We at work all day. Then we got the kids when we get off. Then we do this, do this. Just running the rip. Like the world has us so busy doing stuff so we don't have. Like, hey, hey. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I'm saying that's why the word says uh, pray um, constantly. Or be yeah, communion pray without ceasing. Constantly mm -hmm. because you can so easily be distracted and get out of the presence and regardless. This goes back to being one person. Living one life. God, wanted, God wants it where everything is the same for you. Y'all know what I mean by that? You don't never clock out. At work, at home, at school, at wherever you are. You're one person. You never cut off communication with him because you don't need to. But when you always got to put on a different hat, wherever you go, you ain't the same person. Nowhere you go, nowhere you go, you ain't the same person. You're a different person everywhere you go. At work, you're one person. When you're at home, you're another person. When you're with your friends, you're another person. When you're with your family, you're another person. How in the world can you be one? How? Do you know how tiring that is to keep switching hats? That's the enemy is. Listen, man, that joke is smart. He giving you 18,000 different mindsets. 18,000. Y'all know what I hate more than anything? And y'all heard me say this, but I don't think I use the word hate. I'm going to use hate right now. I hate sayings. When I first started coming into uh, uh, my own reading a word of my own, one of the first things he told me to do is follow sayings. And I didn't understand it at first until I started following. Do y'all know we alter lifestyles by sayings? That's how powerful words are. Follow me. Y'all remember when that phrase who sent you came out? Your attitude follows that. Uh, can't nobody check me. Now can't nobody tell you nothing. Yeah, don't come for me unless I sit for you. I stand on business. Now everybody want to fight. No, everybody now want to know what kind of shoes you got on when you stand on business. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like what kind of shoes you got when you stand on business? The enemy is crafty, man. <laughs> Keep you busy. Wow. Talking about nothing. Nothing. Talking about nothing. <laughs> I, man, I promise you, if one more person called me about this during solely, I don't care. Don't call me about I don't care. 
I wonder what's gonna happen. Something. <laughs> you know they say. You know they said there's a there's a, a spaceship in our solar system. I dealt four years ago. We talked about that. You should have been know about it. I ain't on that right now. I'm trying to fix me. I'm not there with, with If he come, I got some uh, sandwich meat in there. What you want me to do? The enemy gets us wrapped up in foolishness. Yes, fear. Yes. He was fear. Want you to be scared of everything. You won't ever enjoy this life fooling around with them. Walking around, ski. I don't wonder if I need to. Need to put you some water in the corner and sit down somewhere. <laughs> Get you some water and toilet paper, cause for some reason people buy the toilet paper. Some water and toilet paper, sit down somewhere. Put you the big ass supplies. If you ain't got no flashlight and batteries, that's your fault. We talked about this four years ago. That's the old preparation. He trying to prepare you now. He preparing his army. Who's the band had artillery? Trying to figure out how to uh who got the best uh uh seafood now. <laughs> Y'all talking about stuff. I don't care. Is the restaurant gonna be the restaurant open? I'm gonna go. If it be shut down, we got some food in there. That make me no difference. I'm young, just being I'm being honest with you. That stuff don't scare me. He done took me through those. I don't went through all of that. He doing the important stuff now. He laid a foundation so that we are not fooled. That's the reason why you know. The reason why you had to know who you were, that you were the real chosen people, is so that you had an identity. The reason why he wanted you to know, he wanted you to know that these they planted something uh, crazy is so that you're not fooled when they get here. This was preparation. That's it. It wasn't for you to move in fear. It's not a doctrine. All right. I'm sorry. I'm off my soapbox. Proverbs 3 and 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto your own foolishness. That ain't what he said. He said, I'm standing. Yeah. That's what he meant. Right? Yeah. That's what he meant. You listen, these are the things that make you go off into your ways. <laughs> That's what we're gonna call it. This is the this is this scripture right here is what makes you go off into your ways. Because as soon as something comes close to your heart that you ain't dealt with, you move into selfishness. Mm -hmm. But if you love him with all your heart, he gonna clean it up. So instead of worrying about spaceships, clean your heart. If you got a clean heart, you ain't worried about you ain't worried about nothing. You ain't worried about Obama, Trump, uh, none of that. I don't know who run it. I don't care who run it. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Stop calling me. Please don't call this phone. Please. I don't want to talk about. It. And lean not unto. <laughs> And lean not unto the, thine own understanding in all thy ways. This is what he's talking about. He said, wait, your ways come from your heart. And they don't go together, that heart and ways. I like the way they lined up too. Heart on ways. Y'all see how that lined up? In heart on ways. Lean not to your own understanding and you can cut out them bad ways you got. Listen. You didn't just get a filthy mouth today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People been telling you you nasty. Mm -hmm. You didn't just start today. People didn't just start telling you you got a bad attitude. Did you just start today? People been telling you since she was since she was little. Mm -hmm. Since she was little, they've been telling you. Now you know how you get. If somebody said that to you, check yourself. Mm -hmm. now, now you know how you get. <clears throat> why? Hey, why you getting? You got to stop getting. <laughs> now, 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 you know. 
Yeah, but that I know y'all don't deal with stuff like that. But 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 if you be getting, stop getting. But if you do get, we got an answer for it, okay? He says, in all your getting, acknowledge him. In all your, you know how you get. Acknowledge him. And he can get rid of it. Every time you get ready to get. Acknowledge him. They should have capitalized. I hate when they don't do it. Him. He the only one. He the only one that can get you out of your getting. Because you know how you get when you get. And you're going to be how you be till you're done being. But if you acknowledge him when it starts staring up, he can direct your path. So you ain't doing that foolishness that you normally do. Let me tell you something. And I know, I know, I know. You ain't got no business putting your hands on um, nobody or beating up their car or burning up their house. You ain't got, look, keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> keep your hands to yourself now. Right. You ain't got no more self-control Acknowledge him. How could look? Yeah, we ain't never thought about it this way because we were just standing on business, <laughs> right? You ain't never thought about it this way because you were just standing on business. You, you gonna learn? Let me tell you the most toxic song I've ever heard in my life. It's a I don't know if it's a country song, pop song, or it's a country, but she say I did something to his four door ride, slash something in all four times. Man I used to be put in jail. <laughs> I bet you he'll learn next time he decides to cheat. That's a good, that's a good one. Too. Yeah, I bust the windows at you. <laughs> yeah, bust the windows out of cars and things. But that man car alone. That car didn't do nothing to you. That's a mindset. I had that mindset. I had to be transformed. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Do you understand? Listen, what I'm touching. Do you understand how off you got to go? You got to go to a whole other level. <laughs> You got to go. You don't care about nothing at that point. Man, you don't care about no handcuffs. Take me to jail. Do you understand how, where you got to go mentally to say, I, man? And then I didn't hear one say, call him then. And I done seen one stand there way. <laughs> How come we can't take that energy and put it in the righteousness? Right. That we gonna stand on business no matter what they call somebody. I mean what I say. We won't take that approach that way. For some reason, our mind won't switch that way. Stop running. Acknowledge. Stop running. And acknowledge. One more time. Stop running and acknowledge. Mm -hmm. There's something about accountability. We talked about this yesterday. Something about accountability. Everybody wants to be in charge until it's time to be in charge. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Because everybody wants to tell people what to do until they understand that that comes with accountability. Mm -hmm. You got to be accountable for the things you say. But we run from accountability, but we want to be leaders. Mm. Well, I ain't really say it like that. Yes, that's exactly what you said. Stand on it. Mm -hmm. You stand on business for everything else. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So we don't want responsibility because we know responsibility comes with accountability. But guess what? You're already responsible for one another. And you can't do nothing about it. Right. Acknowledge. The word is yada. We talked about this word before. It means a whole bunch of things. But for this text, I broke it down easy. It means to be with or dwell in. So acknowledging him means to be with him. To dwell in him. That means, yes, when you're doing your foolishness, you're supposed to be with him. And that's how he directs your path out of that mess. Mm -hmm. I promise y'all he meant your mess more than he meant your good ways. 
Because if you ain't, if if you if you if you walk in a straight and narrow, he don't need a direct your path. You already on the you already on the right one. Right. It's when you veer off that he need to scoot you back over there. And if you went over there, don't be mad at how he scoot you back. You went over there. He didn't put you over there. And he gonna put you back over there by any means necessary. He'll send warning the first time. Hey, going the wrong way. Y'all know we don't hear that first one. Second time, he gonna send somebody over there to tell you, hey, go get him. You can't do this, Go get him. Oh, God. <laughs> then when you yeah, yeah, that's what they say. Then when you don't want to hear that somebody he sent, mm -hmm. all right, start going through. Whatever that means. Go ahead, go ahead. He'll do that. He'll because what y'all don't understand is that's what Satan waiting on. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the words say he walking to and fro, waiting for you to go. Mm -hmm. Yep. So he walking to and fro, and then he going up to you. Y'all gotta remember, he didn't just have, he couldn't do nothing. The Job was in his presence at all times. This is what the word said. The word said Job was so tied to him, he was so close to him. Satan had to get permission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good teaching. But if you out there, hey, big fella, he out. I'll permit it. Right. <laughs> to acknowledge God means to dwell in to dwell in him and be with him always. Even when you don't feel worthy. Mm -hmm. We have this misconception that when we do something wrong, we stray away. Mm -hmm. That's when you should be running to him. If y'all ain't never learned that from David, y'all need to please study David, man. God called God called David a man after his own heart. Because David knew as long as I stay in his presence. Because we don't have strength without him. I'm going to prove this to y'all. I'm going to prove that you don't have strength outside of him. And I'm going to use David. I'm going to use somebody else. I'm going to use David too. David was a bad joker, man. Y'all been look now. David did some messed up stuff. But David knew something, man. Check me out. Psalm 16 and 11 said, Thou wilt show me the path of life. David said from the beginning, I know that the only person that can show me the path of life is you anyway. Mm -hmm. There's another scripture where he said, don't matter where I go, I know you're going to be there, so I might as well just stay with you. If I go to the, this boy said, if I go to the depths of the sea, you'll be there. So he said, you will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. In your presence, God, is fullness of joy. This is a man after God's own heart, so we should listen to him. Watch this. After he talked about being in his presence, he said, and at thy right hand, he didn't use both hands. He said just the right hand. He didn't even use, he said just the right one. And at thy right hand are pleasures forever. They won't stop. Just see that it's right. You ain't even got, just try to get to the right hand. That left one must be a bad joker too, because that right one. I thank God, left hand. <laughs> they pleasures at his right hand. Forever. He said, if you dwell in his presence, there's fullness of joy. But if you get in that right hand, there's pleasures. 
listen, y'all done had some pleasures in my life, but I don't know what godly pleasures is, but I need them. Because mine don't seem to last unless they come from him. I done tried this thing on my own and I accomplished it, but I didn't know I had a calling, so he took it. But I want something that's going to last. Don't store up for yourself treasures on earth. Y'all listen to me. Where thieves can come in and steal it. But store up for yourself treasures in where? The kingdom of heaven. Where thieves or nobody can touch it. In his presence is the fullness of joy. But what is his joy? What is this joy? Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, Then he said unto them, Go you, go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them from whom nothing is prepared. What that sound like? That, that, that sound like them pleasures. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. Don't eat look. If they ain't with you, they ain't with you. What you sorry for? You try to tell them. This is why you got to give us a new mind and a new body when we come. Because we're going to be feeling sorry for everybody. Because you're going to be able to see them. Here we go. This is what he said. For the joy of the Lord. He said, David said, the presence of the Lord is joy. Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So in his presence is your strength. Yeah, I almost shout when they get me. We've been trying to figure this thing out for a while. And it's been right in front of our face the whole time. All we got to do is reach that right hand. But in order to reach that right hand, you got to be in his presence. We got to get back to Eden. You got to put on that Eden, that kingdom mindset. You got to dwell with him no matter how you feeling, no matter what's going on. You got to understand him to be your father. And no matter what's happening, I'm staying under my father's roof. Because without him, you're weak. It's only in his presence that we're at full strength. So we got to get back to his presence. Hope I said something that was edifying to y'all today. Hallelujah. Father, God, we thank you, Father, for always being in our presence, Father, when we come together, Father. You said where two or three are gathered in your name, there you shall be in the midst, Father. So we thank you right now for the strength that you are filling up in this room. Father, we understand, Father, that, that, that at your presence is the fullness of joy, Father. And at your right hand are the pleasures we've been seeking for our entire life. So, Father, y'all, right now we are seeking that right hand. We always say we're seeking your face, but I'm going to seek your right hand today. Father, I thank you for all that you are. I thank you for all that you do. Father, I ask right now, if there's anybody, Father, that is watching live or or or, or, or going to watch later, Father, that, that you touch their hearts on today, Father. Console their hearts, Father. Stare up their pure minds and show them the things that are holding them back from your presence, Father. You are making a mighty call on today, Father. So we are asking right now, Father, that you reach, that you pierce the flesh and reach the hearts of your people, that they may know you. And know you alone. And know nothing else. We love you and we thank you. In your mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Bishop, you got anything? No. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all, y'all know we do this every Friday at 745. Every Sunday at 1130. Prayer is at 11. If anybody wants to contact us, please just send me a message and I'll, I'll reach back out to you. Um, just inbox me if anybody feel led to give. We do do Facebook pay. Also, the cash app is a uh, dollar sign. This is the way. Um, but we do this every Friday at seven forty-five. Every Sunday at eleven thirty. We love y'all, and we'll see y'all next time. Shalom.